Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Kotlin Bytes. In this episode, we're going to be talking about strings. We're going to talk about the concatenation of strings, the formatting of strings, and also this concept of a raw string in Kotlin. So, to begin, we are exactly where we left off last time. I'm actually going to get rid of everything here. And I am going to start cleaning. So, first thing is concatenation. What do I mean by this? Well, let me give you an example. I want to create two variables, one called A, which is going to be, we'll just call Apple, and another one called B. Now, if we could print these out, and the print statements in Kotlin are just, they're, they're really a proxy to the Java versions. And what I mean by that is that in Java, you used to be able to write system.out.print, and then you had print and print ln. The Kotlin version just removes the system.out. So you have print and print ln, and they work the same way. In fact, I know that this is an aside, but uh, if you if you control click on a function, so if you just control hover, it, it'll give you a little bit of information about it. But if you click on it, it'll actually take you to the definition of that function. And this is a built-in function. And what's great is that it actually shows you the, all the definition information here. But uh, you'll notice that it's literally a proxy to system dot out. And if we go back, I'll zoom in again, uh, and we enter text like A, go back to it, you'll see it's a different function, but it's, again, just a proxy to print ln. Uh, with that being said, they work the same way. If we remove the ln and just print A and then print B, at the very end, we'll just print, oops, print ln. Print ln adds a new line at the end of the print statement. If we run this, we get apple banana, which is what we wanted. We wanted to join these two statements. That's concatenation. However, this is a messy way of approaching it, right? Uh, even though apple banana is in one line, we don't really want that. We want to just print out one thing. We only want to use one print statement. So I'm going to get rid of those two things. And I'm going to concatenate both the strings in one line. To do so, very similar to Java, you could just use the plus. So A plus B, it's not mathematics. It's more so appending these two strings together. It's attaching them. And so if we run this program, it should look exactly the same. OK. Now, what if we want to attach a number? We'll call this num0. And uh, it's going to be just 0. Well, if we wanted to, we could add num0. And that works, actually. If we run it, we get apple banana 0. Great. Now, what if it's the reverse? num0 plus. We actually get an error. And that's this, this is because uh, num0 is a number, and then we're trying to add to it. So what's happening here is it's, it's trying to apply a mathematical addition to a string. And a string doesn't have a mathematical value, at least not in its current state. So you get an error. How do we combat this? Well, this, this way of working with concatenation in Kotlin is actually uh, not really the, the way to go. The correct way to append or to concatenate strings in Kotlin is to use something called Kotlin string templates. And to do so, you use the dollar sign like this. The dollar sign by itself doesn't do anything. However, when you add a variable name right after it, it does something quite special. For example, dollar sign A, you see it turns orange. Now, what does this do? We'll ignore the warning for now. Uh, if we run this, we'll see it spits out apple. Interesting. And the reason why it gives, it gives us a warning is because it's redundant, because that's all we're we're printing. Uh, if we add another dollar sign, a b, it's going to functionally do the same thing that we had before, which was apple banana. And there's no plus here, but that's because we have a string, and within the string, we're saying we want the value of a and the value of b. We could then, of course, add num zero here, and that works the same way. If we move this to the front, 
there's no error, and it should work. So there should be zero apple banana. Great. So that is concatenation. Uh, in its simplest form, try to con try to concatenate within uh, a string template like this. You could also add other text here. These pluses mean nothing, actually, other than they're going to appear in the output string. So you could have spaces here. There are zero, well, whatever number zero is, A and, oops, A and B. There are zero, banana, and apple. Uh, grammatically, it doesn't make sense, but I think you get the idea. <laughs> okay, so moving on to formatting. Let's make num0 equal to pi. So 3.14159, call this pi. So we're going to print out another statement. Uh, yeah, I'll get rid of these. So formatting is very similar to Java. Uh, the formatting characters are the same between the two platforms. So if you're very familiar with Java, uh, then this will be easy. What I'll do in the link below, or in the description below, I'll give you a link to all the formatting characters that you can use. For this example, I'm only going to use the string, float, or number formatter. So for that, it is percent sign, period, the number of decimal places you'd like to round to, which will, which will be two here, and then f. So this statement right here is the formatting that's going to be replaced with whichever value I choose. That'll make sense in a second. So I'm going to say here pi. Now this by itself won't do anything. If I run it, it just prints out exactly what I have. However, if I say dot format and place in here pi, pi is of course this value up here, and run it, the format function is going to replace everything that starts with this percent sign followed by some format. So what this statement is saying is I want to format this string given this value. If I were to increase 2 to 3, then you'll see that it adds one more uh, decimal to my number, to my number format. I, mean, I have five decimal places here, but it's only giving me three, and it, in this case, it rounds up because of, I have a five here. And of course, if this is one, it's only going to be 3.1. The final thing I want to show you is a raw string. So a raw string is usually used for long text. And to create a raw string, you type three double quotes in a row. It'll automatically add the other three. And then I typically just press enter. Automatically, IntelliJ is going to add this trim indent for you. And all that does is it, it trims out this portion of the text. Uh, yeah, so anyway, anything you added to here uh, you know, this is a paragraph. And what you'll notice is that I'm able to create text on multiple lines. If I were to print this out, the multiple lines are preserved, so there, there are line breaks. However, this section is taken out. Uh, and this section is what trim indent is doing. It's getting rid of the indent. Um, yeah, let's see what happens if I add an indent. So any indents that are added will remain. And if for some dumb reason I remove that indent, the indents are then added to the other side. So basically the rule is wherever the shortest indent is, that is what's going to be removed from all the lines. Okay. That is it for this episode of Kotlin Bytes. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will respond uh, and or create a video about it. So have a great day. Thanks for watching.